nothing more difficult than forecasting oil prices. David Fife, head of research and analysis of the markets for Gunvor, has joined us to discuss oil supply and demand. David, good morning. Good morning. So what are the main drivers for oil? I think if you're looking at oil prices uh, over the last decade, clearly it's uh, the ability of the supply side of the equation to keep up with very strong demand growth in the emerging markets. And of course that in turn is tied in with levels of income growth, economic growth. I think looking forward through 2013 and I think certainly over the last two years, in a sense we've had prices uh, bound on the underside. Uh, or propped up, if you like, by geopolitical risks, which have clearly been playing a role, particularly what's happening in Iran. I think to the upside, to a degree, a ceiling has been placed over prices uh, by concerns about the sustainability of the economic recovery. And really that sort of envelope of those two factors in 2011, 2012, and I think going through 2013, are going to be the key determinants of where, where price is headed over the next 12 to 15 months. OECD demand is diminishing, while it's clearly non-OECD demand that is rising. Why is that? Um, I think really we, we, we would argue, and I think most analysts would argue, that uh, since 2005, OECD oil demand has been in structural decline. Really, oil has been backed out of the industrial sectors in those markets, uh, and it's very much restricted to use in transport and petrochemicals. In the non-OECD and the emerging markets, of course, uh, high levels of population growth, high levels of income growth, uh, and there's still a lot of oil used for power generation and in the industrial sectors. And really, we think all of the oil demand growth looking forward over the next five to ten years is going to be uh, generated by the emerging markets. The big question is, is you know, how much? What is the scale of that growth going to be over the next five, ten years? Speaking about forecasting, there is very little consensus between the agencies and the research teams on the future of price of oil. Can you tell us why is it so, seems to be so difficult to forecast this price with some degree of accuracy. I think in term, price forecasting is a, th a thankless task and of course for refiners and trading companies what they focus upon is very much differentials and spreads between regions and between products. So actually the, the flat price of oil uh, going forward is, is not something they focus upon. But I think it's the, the multitude of factors that drive price mm. are, are, is really the key, key reason why it's very difficult to forecast going forward. You have supply and demand, you have bottlenecks in terms of logistics and refining, um, you have financial markets and expectations for the global economy which are playing a role. And whether you're looking at oil demand going forward uh, or prices, it's the un inherent uncertainty there and the, the heterogeneity in terms of oil. Oil is not one single commodity. Crude oils are of different qualities. Uh, you have oil, oil products of very different qualities and uses, and therefore it makes the forecasting of demand, and for that matter prices, uh, a pretty hazardous uh, undertaking. Now, the big topic, shale gas and United States energetic independence. Is it going to happen and when? I think we've seen an in incredible takeoff uh, first in, in natural gas production from shale in, the, in North America and more recently the, the focus has very much switched to oil and uh, US crude production has now regained the levels that it last reached in 1997-1998. The US is already a significant exporter of oil products, finished oil products. It is talking about uh, LNG exports, and there's uh, one major project that's been approved for the US to export LNG. I think the, the big question looking forward is as US light tight oil supply expands, uh, is the US government going to allow producers to export crude oil? At the moment they can export finished products, but the oil that is coming from shale is fairly light and sweet in character. Uh, the oil that U.S. domestic refiners are geared up to process is cheaper, heavy, sour crude. So there's a mismatch in terms of quality, and it's as much that question of quality as the volume that's uh, 
uh, likely to, to emerge over the next three to five years, I think, is, is the key question. So is the US government going to open up the market and allow producers to, in a sense, swap light sweet feedstock for heavier sour crude that they are, they're looking to run in, in refineries in North America. That really is the key issue going forward, I think. There is a tradition in the US that they will not export crude oil. That's certainly been the case. I mean, there, there have traditionally been limited cross-border sales uh, into Canada, and crude has been uh, able to be exported from Alaska. But aside from that, there's a presumption against crude oil exports. Uh, energy independence uh, or a greater degree of energy in independence is certainly an aspiration uh, for, for US politicians. So it is a very sensitive issue, but it's one I think within the next two to three years, the US is likely to have displaced light sweet crude imports with domestic supplies. And once that has happened, it really raises the question, can producers then begin to export that light sweet material and sort of rebalance the quality of crude oil that the domestic refining sector uh, is looking for. David, thank you very much for joining us today.